everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms. Hope y'all enjoyed that intro because that's leading up to our part two of our top 10 Call of Duty Modern Warfare guns. You guys loved our part one Call of Duty guns, top 10, so much so that it's actually our now number one most viewed video, hitting over a million views now. So thank you all. And without further ado, let's go ahead and head into the next top 10. By the way, what you just saw at the intro here of all of that live fire shooting, mag dumping, all that, that's not all the shooting that's taking place in this video. We're gonna talk about each of these guns, starting off with the Finnick and taking them to the range and shooting them. But uh, the Finnick in real life is actually the Chris Vector, chambered in 45 ACP. They do also chamber it in nine mil, but this guy right here is a super cool looking design and gun. And with their later generations, like this one right here, they've actually done a couple of different things to increase reliability and ergonomics with the firearm. One of those things being kind of like the safety. It, no, it doesn't dig nowhere near as bad, still digs a little bit, no, but nowhere near as bad as like the first one did, you know, when trying to shoot, things like that. But a really cool gun. This one here is what's called the enhanced model. It has a little bit longer barrel and also an extended rail on it that has M-Lock and Picatinny on it. So if you wanted to throw any other type of like lights or attachments or anything, you can, all that type of fun stuff. Picatinny rail up top, as most of you know who play the game, so that way you can throw any type of optics you want on there, just running no optic and going with the iron sights on this guy. And uh, it does take Glock mags, which is awesome and probably a question that a lot of you guys are gonna ask. Does it take Glock mags? Anyway. Yeah, so the Fennec, Chris Vector. Oh, last thing before we take it to the range. Why is it called the Vector? It's because it's re-vectoring the entire recoil felt by the shooter pretty much down and away from the shooter. So it's coming, what happens is when you pull the trigger on this guy and it goes boom, the bolt will actually cycle. And instead of coming straight back, it actually drops down here into this little area here, which is pretty neat. So it changes it up quite a bit. Actually super easy to take apart as well. Uh, but yeah, so what do you guys say we go and, you know, shoot some still with this guy now. Oh yeah. Now because of that revectoring recoil mitigation system that I mentioned before, this thing is a easy shooter, even with that 230 grain 45 ACP cartridge. Oh man, it is awesome. And I really like the feel of this gun. A couple things I have to keep in mind though. I like to hold this guy right where the slide release is which isn't typically good if you wanna do quick reloads. And I have to kind of keep my finger out like this when pulling the trigger because of where that safety is located in the downward position while on fire. Not bad though, and a whole lot of fun to shoot. Next up is the SPR-208. But what you see right here is actually a Proof Research Mountain Tactical Rifle chambered in 300 Win Mag. Now the actual SPR-208 is based off of the Remington 700 or more so the M24 Sniper Weapon System, but I don't have either one of those and Remington RIP actually isn't manufacturing anymore. So I went with something even better. Still chambered in 300 Win Mag, of course, is this guy, the Proof Research Mountain Tactical Rifle. Beautiful fiber stock that this thing has. It's lightweight, and Proof Research also includes their carbon fiber barrel on these guys. So again, super light, coming in at about seven, six, seven pounds thereabout. But once you add this big, hefty Crimson Trace optic on it, gets a little bit heavier. But anyway, like I said, 300 Win Mag, Zermatt Arms Origin uh, bolt on it, and also action, and just, whew, this thing is sweet. Also to go ahead and give this a like if you think the SPR is cancer in Modern Warfare. Anyways, let's go shoot this guy. Oh my goodness. Now, when I took my first couple shots with this guy, I really expected the carbon fiber stock, the whole gun that only weighs seven pounds, the carbon fiber wrapped barrel to have a heck of a lot more recoil than what I just felt. But, and also no muzzle device, but this thing is a sweet shooter. The Zermatt Arms Origin Action. Oh, it's so smooth. Oh, oh yeah. Oh man. Ooh, that is nice. Now this thing is great in real life for some long range damage. What about something a little bit close range, something that is just way too big for a pistol, the Desert Eagle. It
It is a 50 Action Express chambered pistol and it is nuts, all right? So yes, it is a 50 caliber handgun, semi-auto that you see right here. As you can tell, it's a uh, small boy, am I right? But uh, no, this thing is crazy. It's been in production since the early 80s, 1983 to be correct. Uh, the Israelis, IWI, IMI, pretty much came out with this guy because they wanted something that would like end vehicles or something, I don't know. Or robots in case they decided to take over one day. But anyway, this thing is awesome. Just the power, the, the recoil, everything about it. There's nothing small about it at all. And yeah, like I said, 50 Action Express holds seven rounds on the magazine. And this one specifically, it's actually a little bit smaller version, has a little bit shorter barrel. It's got more of a ported barrel, as you can tell right here, which is pretty neat. And there's the entire like uh, slide and action and everything. It's pretty crazy. Notice too that the bolt face is, it's actually a rotating bolt design, which is very similar to the AR-15, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, anyway, yeah, really neat gun. Ambi safety on it too, which is nice. Hammer fired. Let's take it to the range and go mag dump this guy and see how it feels to shoot this guy, you know, one handed a little bit some, you know, in case you're in the gulag and you gotta dual wield him. Yeah. This is a 45 ACP with the Chris Vector, AKA Fennec shoots. This is a 50 Action Express for comparison there. What the Desert Eagle shoots, and I really am wondering why I said I'd shoot this one handed. Oh. 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 <laughs> Oh, that is absolutely ridiculous. Not practical at all, but even more reason to love it. 50 Action Express. So yes, a 50 caliber bullet being shot from a handgun. Oh, yeah, this thing is spicy. Now, next time I'll try to go ahead and just dual wield them straight up gulag style and uh, 1v1 me, bro. I don't know. Anyway, Styrog. Next up is the AUG, but our AUG has the 5.56 mag conversion on it, and Steyr, S-T-E-Y-R is the name of the company that first produced the Steyr AUG STG-77 back in 1977, and it is looked at as being the first pretty much successful commercial and full-on produced bullpup design firearm. What does bullpup mean? It means that the entire firing, sequencing, the loading, the ejecting, all of that is taking place rearward of the trigger mechanism. So in other words, all the loading and everything where the magazine is inserted is happening back here instead of up forward like what we typically see on most modern firearms. So Steyr has been around for a long time and uh, they are making some beautiful guns. The original STG-77 came equipped with a one and a half power optic mounted right up top and and a little bit longer barrel. The game, I think, has it with like maybe a 12 inch barrel ending here, but due to gun laws and things like that, stupid stuff, uh, this has a 16 inch barrel on it and is, oh, it's sweet guys. It's real sweet, all right? So this is the Steyr AUG and it is a lot of fun to shoot. Upon first looking at it, and getting my hands on it, I was like, there's no way this is gonna be comfortable, ergonomic, there's gonna be no way I can shoot it quickly or anything like that. But then you go and shoulder this guy and you're like, okay, it's pretty freaking awesome. Let's go shoot it. Let's get my Stormtrooper on, how about it? All right, that's a joke, obviously. I can actually hit the target, I promise. <laughs> Man, now because, uh, like I mentioned before, just the ergonomics, the bullpup design of this guy, everything's nice and tight to the body, which means I can actually keep this guy held up with one hand for a longer period of time. There's not so much front end weight. This thing feels great. Oh yeah. Man, ah, should have fully loaded that mag because this is way too much fun. But anyway, another thing when looking at it, you don't expect it to be a comfortable gun to shoot. It doesn't, when you dry fire the trigger, it doesn't feel like you're gonna be able to shoot it that fast. And then you get to the range and this thing just starts, it's in its natural habitat out here and you just start running drills with it and it is fun. Oh, goodness. But anyway, talk about cool. Let's talk about some cool Israeli guns with the Uzi next. Next up is the Uzi, but what I have here specifically in front of me is the IWI Uzi Pro, and this is the second firearm coming from the Israeli manufacturer IWI, and we actually have a third one coming up soon, so stay tuned. But this guy 
we all love and hate the, <laughs> the Uzi, man. Talk about a fast rate of fire, chambered in nine millimeter, and what's actually issued to the Israeli forces right now is something very similar to this, but the Uzi Pro SMG, the actual submachine gun, as you guys probably know, this is semi-auto again due to gun laws, uh, but the actual SMG that is issued has a stock, not a pistol brace on it, and actually has an integrated vertical grip and angled grip, which is pretty neat. What we get here is kind of the uh, dumbed down version, again due to gun laws, but uh, so we got a Picatinny space right up here, so if you wanted to actually short barrel rifle or SBR this thing and register it with the ATF, you can throw on a vertical grip then, or you could just have a hand stop, whatever else you want to throw on it as long as you're, you know, remaining legal, but all that's not fun to talk about. Anyway, yeah, this guy's been around since 1950, uh, actually saw service in 1954 and is still being produced and in service all throughout the world today, since 1954. Pretty crazy, right? And so actually kind of funny to think about all of our fire, a lot of our firearms, like the AR-15 platform has been around since about that time too. Woo, a lot of changes have been made though because this guy, optics ready right up top, so if you want to throw on a red dot, you can. It's also got the threaded barrel right back here, so if you want to integrate a suppressor, you can, but let's just take it to the range and shoot it. How about that? Let's take a couple shots with the little guy here. <laughs> All right, so it's a cool little gun, and this isn't the full-size Uzi like what's in the game. It's the compact boy, which I think is a little bit cooler because, you know, can still carry, right? That's a joke. Anyway, no, what would make this guy a lot better is if I could just hold down the trigger and everything just go, you know, like a full auto, but, you know, gun laws and stuff, which are dumb, but whatever. There we go. Woo. Again, 9 mil, 25-round mags it comes with. Cool little gun. Ah, oh, man. But... Anyway, like I said, cool little gun, but what do you guys say? We go talk about not a Dragunov. We're gonna pause the Call of Duty sweetness that is this current video for just a moment. Why? Because, well, I've got a bear at 50 cal in front of me and who doesn't love to see a bear at 50 cal, am I right? But really, I've been talking about all these calibers and everything else, and speaking of calibers, ammunition is getting harder and harder to find. Welcome to 2021. So if you guys are in the hunt for ammo, make sure you are signing up at classicfirearms.com for our SMS text alerts and email notifications. So that way you'll be the first notified of whenever we have one of our often occurring ammunition shipments. You can do that simply by either scanning this QR code with your phone or go ahead and text video to the number that you see at the bottom of your screen. And again, you'll be part of our first alert notification crowd team, group, whatever you want to call yourselves. So that way you will hop right in on these ammo shipments, maybe new giveaways like our current giveaway of the Zenith Z5. And heck, who knows, maybe coming soon we'll give away another Barrett 50 cal like what's sitting <laughs> right here in front of me. And yeah, we, we will be. So anyway, back to the video. Let's go talk about some more cock guns. Next up is not a Dragunov, even though that's kind of what we're using this as. It's actually a PSL, and you might be asking, what the heck is the difference? Because they look very, very similar. They even shoot the same caliber, 7.62 by 54R, which is the same caliber that a Mosin Nagant shoots, or an M39, or a PKM. Need one of those in here to feature in their Call of Duty guns, right? But anyway, pretty much the SVD Dragunov uses what's called a short stroke piston system. Romania, where the PSL is originated from, uses is a system very similar, actually almost identical to the AK or AKM or AK-47, all those different variants. All they did was pretty much take the AK and just stretch it out. So what that means is the long stroke piston system is, is means that there's actually a long rod that's connected to the bolt carrier group. On a short stroke piston system, there's actually a separate piston that hits a strike face on the bolt carrier group. Just two different ways, two different means of getting to the same destination, pretty much. But anyway, really cool gun. Uh, they don't take you know the same mags as the Dragunov, things like that, but like I said, looks, it's got it, chambered in the same, same caliber. Ooh, let's go shoot it. Not a Dragunov. Man, one thing I will say though, is this thing is a smooth shooter. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> now shooting a cartridge very similar to what our 308 is, except it's what's called a rimmed cartridge, which it just has a rim at the bottom of the casing for the extractor to hold on to. 
Oh man, so like I said, not a Dragunov. It is a PSL, which is pretty much the Romanian stretched out AK made for reaching out to a little bit further distances than what your regular, you know, platoon soldier infantryman can, can reach to with their like AK, AKM. So good to engage those a little bit further out targets. But now I wanna talk about a gun that makes even the best COD players look terrible, DP-12. This next gun puts the SPR to shame when it comes to trolling. <sighs> the DP-12. This gun right here with some Dragon's Breath and shipment causes me more anxiety than I could ever need in one lifetime. But in real life, it's actually a really cool gun. This is the standard manufacturing DP-12. And yes, it has two barrels, two magazine tubes, and with the pull of a trigger, you shoot from one side of the barrel, bam, and then again, bam, cock it, and that's another two rounds ready to go. So just, that's the type of rhythm you can expect with this guy. Now, standard manufacturing makes all sorts of neat things out there, some case hardened 1911s and other things like that, but the TB12, oh, it frustrates me to infinity and beyond when it comes to Call of Duty. But anyway, let's throw on a sight on this guy and let's just go light up Mr. Hand Select or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, unlike your traditional pump shotgun, it's one shot, one pump, right? This guy gives you two shots for one pump. How cool is that? Notice where the shell casings are dropping too, right beneath me here, not off to the side or anything like that. So yeah, you can consider this very ambidextrous. <laughs> Man, and seven rounds in each tube gives you an overall capacity of 14 rounds. And just how cool does that look? Oh yeah, that's super cool. Anyway, all right, so this is great for close quarters, obviously. What else, something a little bit more mid-range, a little bit more tactical, a little bit more DMR-ish, the M14. EBR, according to Call of Duty, but it's not. But anyway, let's go talk about it. Next up is one of my personal favorite rifles, the M14. But what we've got here today is actually the Springfield Armory M1A. Now what we see in the video game is what they call the EBR-14, which actually stands for the Enhanced Battle Rifle. But that's typically, well, the M14 rifle paired with the Sage chassis, and it is a sweet looking setup, and I really wanna get my hands on one, shoot it, and then eventually give it away, I guess. But anyway, what we've got here is the SOCOM 16, which has the 16 inch barrel, so a little bit shorter, still chambered in 308 or 762 by 51. And as you guys can tell, it does have the Picatinny rail right up front here, so if you wanted to throw on an optic, you can, but you might be thinking, why would I throw an optic up that far, especially if it's a scope, I won't be able to see anything, no, there are scopes out there that actually offer a long eye relief, so you can offer, so you can have that option. Also, too, you could just grab a scope mount that mounts right over here and then sits right on top of the action. So that's another option. But anyway, I'm a huge fan of this platform, have been for a long time, love shooting it, and uh, I totally think that everybody should at least practice a little bit with an M14 or the Springfield Armory M1A, which is what this guy is. So what do y'all say we go run some steel with some 308 and this rifle? All right, well, that's not part of the script. I did say shoot some still, right? The target fail. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so the Springfield SOCOM 16 or M1A is our M14. Let's just, let's just finish out the mag, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, this thing is sweet. Now this one is the shorter model, SOCOM 16 with a 16 inch barrel. Most of them are about 18, 20 inches. And this one also, as I mentioned before, has the Picatinny rail riding just forward of the receiver. Like I said, looks a little weird. You don't want to typically run an optic that far out, but they do actually have long eye relief scopes you can use. You can actually throw red dots, holographics, whatever you want and do some work with that. Now let's, uh, let's try to put the target back up. Yeah, let's fix that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Next up is the CR56A Max, but in real life, it is the IWI. In fact, it's the third offering from IWI in this list. Uh, the IWI Galil Ace pistol and mm, man these things are awesome obviously ours has the 556 mag conversion on it because the one in the game is chambered in 762 by 39 but iwi does make these pistols and rifles in 762 by 39 and 308 the original galil was chambered in 308 rifle configuration wood furniture things like that a little bit older design and they pretty much took that same design modernized it and made it real rugged and when i say real rugged i mean to the point where anywhere that dust dirt grime could get into they pretty much had covered even the travel for the bolt as you guys can see actually rides right on this little sill or window I guess you could say to prevent from you know any type of debris getting into the bolt mechanics which I think is pretty cool underneath the rail covers up here if you just apply you know pressure on one of these buttons it'll slide up and expose a Picatinny rail there are aftermarket rails out there for you if that's what you're looking for but really neat design overall really really love shooting these guys especially the one that's chambered in 762 by 39 like the game because who doesn't love the same caliber that you know AK shoot it's a great option also too, the brace on it is side folding, which is great, you know, for those concealed carry needs and things like that. So there we go. Now, what do y'all say we go, uh, <laughs> let's go run a couple rounds to this guy at the range. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, the CR-56A Max, or otherwise known as the IWI Galil Ace Pistol, is sweet. Really low recoil impulse on this guy too, which is pretty nice. 556 chamber takes AR mags, which is sweet. AR 15 as an Armalite rifle, not as an assault rifle, because nothing we have here actually is an assault rifle. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, low recoil. This thing. Great. Last round bolt hold open. Man, it feels good. Oh, I really like this gun. <laughs> These Israelis just keep getting it right. I mean, ever since the introduction of their country, they've been having to come up with some pretty awesome firearms and they just keep doing it. Oh yeah. Anyway, let's talk about something else that is just absolutely legend legendary. It gives me a whole like Rick Grimes feel, Colt Python. The 357 with the snake shot attachment also used to troll me super hard in shipment. Uh, go ahead and hit like if you got trolled that way too, especially with the dual wielding. Uh, crazy. Anyway, what the 357 is actually modeled, modeled after is the Colt Python. Talk about legendary, am I right? Now here at Classic Firearms, we've actually given away several of these guys because, well, they're freaking awesome revolvers and we usually pair them up with some sort of modern firearm because it's cool, right? Like, you know, the SMG 45 or, you know, which is also a Call of Duty gun you probably saw in part one, but anyway, this thing has been around for decades now, and the Colt, actually, the manufacturer of the gun, started producing these again in 2020 because they stopped for a while, and due to popular demand, they started making them again with a little bit more modern machinery and refining, but whew, this thing is sweet. Let's go uh, cylinder dump it, I guess. I really don't see how Rick actually hits anything from shooting all the way up here like this. But I will say that the Colt Python and the recoil of the 357 Magnum is not bad at all. And I'm not cheating. These are 357 Magnum, not 38 Special, which by the way, they are interchangeable only if your firearm is uh, rated for 357 Magnum, all right? But the recoil impulse on this guy is just straight back into the hand, not a whole lot of muzzle flip, and it's so comfortable, and the trigger and everything on it just feels great. Oh, it's so good. Now, uh, I think we've pretty much reached the end here, but there is one more gun I'd like to talk about. As a bonus from part one, our current giveaway. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Now let's go talk about it back in the video room.
Well, I hope you all enjoyed our part two to our top 10 Call of Duty Warzone guns. It seems like all of them are the top because, well, we've got them and I love shooting them, right? But anyway, let me know down in the comments which one out of all of them is your absolute favorite and what are you looking forward to in the future? Because there's probably gonna be a top Cold War guns coming out in real life type of thing. So again, go ahead, let me know down in the comments. And what I've got here sitting in front of me is, well, the legendary, the OG MP5, right? But it's also here at Classic Firearms, our current giveaway. This is a Zenith Z5RS. This is a Turkish made MP5, made on the original HK tooling, licensed machining, things along those lines, which is really, really cool. Also included in this giveaway is the SB Tactical Collapsible Brace, Trijicon MRO Red Dot with a 3X magnifier, Midwest Industries M-Lock Rail, and also some body armor because, well, this is a complete loadout. That's your keyword, by the way, loadout or Zenith. We'll allow Zenith. But anyway, this right here, you're getting some guard dog body armor. You got level four ceramic plates inside this shepherd plate carrier and also a level 3A ballistic helmet. What that means is this guy's stopping rifle rounds, this guy's stopping pistol rounds, and you're fully protected, fully covered in this loadout giveaway. So head on over to classicfirearms.com to get those entries. Don't miss out. Hit that top banner and it'll show you all the different ways to get your entries. Again, don't miss out because who doesn't want one of these freaking things that are so cool. Also, I forgot to mention, it comes with something super special. It's called a binary trigger. What that means is it, it goes bang when you pull the trigger and release the trigger and is a lot of fun. If you want to see this guy in action, go check out our video announcing it as our current giveaway. You get to see some of that binary firing fun, all right? It's a good time. Anyway, I'll leave it off there. Go check out part one if you haven't already. We also feature another MP5 there, so there you go. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.